say about nothing, it's very hard to think about. Because does thinking about nothing make it something? Can you only have nothing if there was no sentient being to be aware that there was a universe out there? Aristotle thought there was no such thing as nothing. He called it no thing and denied the existence of nothing and came up with the phrase, nature abhors a vacuum. Number two, is it possible to make nothing, at least in our imagination, by removing everything from the universe? So there was nothing left. And if we did that, if we removed all the planets and stars and every lump of rock out there, would we have removed the universe as well? Number three, nature abhors a vacuum. What does that mean? An example is if you try to remove the air from a straw by sucking on it. For example, if I put the straw in a glass of water, instead of removing the air, what happens is that the water rises up. And if I put my finger over the end, the water will stay there. Number four, the swimmer under the water coming up to the surface. We could eventually come up to the surface of the atmosphere and there'd be no pressure at all. Which begs the thought, does that mean that beyond the atmosphere there is nothing? Well, there's no air, but is empty space really empty? Number five, are the atoms that we're made of empty? The atom has got electrons whirling around on the outside and an atomic nucleus in the middle, and most of it, we're told, is empty space. To give an idea that the size of an atom, if it were the size of a cathedral, the nucleus would only occupy the size of a fly. So is the rest completely empty? Number six, suppose we turned all the lights out, removed all the electric fields, there's still gravity. You only need to have one body in the universe and its gravitational tentacles spread out throughout all of space. Number seven, we're seeing each other because of light shining and light are waves of electric and magnetic fields. The whole of space is filled with starlight. So there are electric and magnetic fields throughout all of space. So the space isn't empty, it's full of electric fields and magnetic fields. Number eight, well in the 20th century we got to learn of the quantum. And quantum theory, you can have particles of matter and antimatter which bubble in and out of existence all the time. You don't notice them, but they're there. So what we used to think was empty space, even if you could imagine removing all of the gravitational fields and all of the electric and magnetic fields, there would still be these weird bubbling particles and antiparticles coming in and out of existence all the time. Number nine, since 2012, we've known for sure that the vacuum is full of something else, a weird ether called the Higgs field. And we know it's there because if you apply energy to it, in just the right amount, you can make it bubble up and create particle manifestations called Higgs bosons. So this weird stuff that fills all of the cosmos it manifests itself when fundamental particles like electrons and quarks pass through, they gain their mass by interacting with it. Number 10, if the total energy of the universe was nothing, quantum theory says you could borrow energy of nothing forever. So it's possible that our universe is actually a quantum fluctuation out of nothing. But it begs the question, if that's the answer to the great paradox, what or who encoded the rule that said a universe can bubble out of nowhere.